Good health to all from Rexall. Yes, it's Sunday. Time for the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. Presented by the makers of Rexall Drug Products and your Rexall family druggist. Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist taking a little time from behind the prescription counter this Sunday evening to speak for all 10,000 of us. The 10,000 independent druggists who have added the word Rexall to our own store names. You can always tell us by the orange and blue Rexall sign on our windows. The sign means that we carry the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. They range all the way from aspirin to penicillin. And they're as fine and pure and dependable as science can make them. We independent druggists recommend them to our customers because we know you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. And now your Rexall family druggist brings you the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Titley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Anne Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, our special guest, Fred Allen, and starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. Last Thursday, Phil and Alice attended the President's inaugural ball in Washington, D.C. It was a very interesting day in the lives of the Harrises, so let's go back to Thursday. We find the Harris family in their hotel suite in Washington. Oh, girls, aren't you excited about being here in Washington? Not very. We could have more fun in sunny California. Yeah, the snow is much deeper back there. <laughs> what do you kids mean you ain't excited? This is a great honor. It ain't everybody that gets invited to the president's inaugural. <laughs> Phil. Phil, the word is inaugural. I'm using the past imperfect gender. <laughs> no, you kids ought to be thrilled about visiting the capital of the United States. Why? Why? Why, Washington is famous for its historical landmarks. Where else can you see the Smithsonian Institute, the White House, the Lincoln Memorial, Grant's Tomb, and the George Washington Bridge? <laughs> Not to mention the Sphinx and the Eiffel Tower. Honey, look, you're confused, please. <laughs> Them are the places we saw in London. <laughs> now, let me educate the children, and you keep working on Indonesia. <laughs> Listen, girls, now, this is very important. It's a very important place to visit, and you should appreciate it. Now, didn't you get a kick out of seeing the president being sworn in today? We were so far back in the crowd, we couldn't hear it. Well, you heard the speeches after I took care of things, didn't you? Yeah, you took care of things all right. I was never so embarrassed in my life. Why? What did I do that was so wrong? Nothing. Except when the president was making his accepted speech, you stood up and yelled, Louder, Clyde! We can't ah. hear you! <laughs> well, it looked like Clyde. <laughs> I didn't know it was the president. Well, I hope you act a little better at the ball tonight. By the way, it's almost 5 o'clock. You girls better run along while Daddy gets dressed. Hey, Alice. Sure is an honor to be invited to the most important affair of the year. You know, everybody just isn't invited. It's a selected group. Did you realize that we're going to be hobnobbing with the best people like senators and ambassadors and... Good morning, Philip. <laughs> while I'm in Washington, I'm going to have this guy repealed. <laughs> Better yet, I'm going to have his mother investigated. Why do you want to have my mother investigated? Having a child like you must be un-American. Oh, Phil, stop picking on Willie. Well, honey, I thought you and I were going to be alone in Washington. Why did Willie have to tag along? After all, we're the ones who were invited to the ball. Well, that's what I dropped in to see you about, Philip. I have news that will make you very happy. Guess what the president gave me? 24 hours to get out of the country. <laughs> now, please, Philip. No, his office sent me an invitation to the ball tonight. Oh, you're going to the ball, really? Yes, Alice. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, Phil, aren't you happy? Glorioski. <laughs> I'm just a bundle of happiness. How'd you ever get an invitation anyway? Hmm? Just went to see my congressman, and he arranged it. It was as simple as that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Look, look, will you get lost books? Go over to the Smithsonian Institute and stand in a case, will you? I'll send for you. Please. You never seem to want me around. Philip, I'm beginning to think you don't like me. That's a nice beginning, Bernard. Keep working on it. Well, I don't care if you want me there or not, Philip. I'm going to the ball. Well, I'd better run now. I have to buy some black Lyle hose to wear with my full dress suit. Goodbye. Black Lyle hose. The guy's too cheap to buy the right stuff for formal wear. What's wrong with black Lyle hose? Well, with a full dress suit, you should wear the best, like me. What are you going to wear? Black and white argyles, of course. <laughs> Maybe with a clock in them, if I get lucky. Oh, that should look very dapper, especially with your yellow shoes. Yes. Well, Phil, you'd better take your full dress suit out of the truck and get it ready. All right, all right. Now that I know Willie's going to be there, I almost don't feel like going. A square like that gets an invitation, and Frankie, a swell guy, and my best friend, don't. I don't know. I think your best friend is a little jealous. Frankie's mad because you're going, and he isn't. Don't be silly. Yeah, Remley ain't like that. He's the most... Coming! Frankie's never been jealous of anything I got. Even if he ain't going, he's going to be happy to know that I am. Oh, hiya, Frankie. I despise you. <laughs> now, wait a minute. What's the matter with you? To think you'd go to the ball without me. I've never been so hurt. Look, Frankie, <laughs> I cried myself to sleep last night. <laughs> Believe me, kid, I'm sorry. My little blue eyes were pink this morning. <laughs> Your little blue eyes are pink every morning, and let's forget it. I tried to give and get an invitation for you, Remley, but I couldn't. I was lucky to get an invitation for Alice and me. Alice? You mean you're taking that woman instead of me? <laughs> that woman happens to be my wife. That's the darndest excuse I ever heard of. <laughs> Why do you want to take Alice to the ball when you could take me? Why do I... Look, Remley. Hmm? Now, hold still just a minute. I'm waiting. Let me put it this way. If you were offered sparkling champagne, would you settle for a stale beer? <laughs> Your analogy is hardly apropos. <laughs> Curly, I never thought you'd let a woman come between us. I never thought Alice Phil, would... Phil! Phil, did you see that? Oh, hello, Frankie. <laughs> I said, hello, Frankie. Don't hello me, you invitation snatcher. <laughs> What brought that on? Don't pay no attention to him, honey. He's just sore because he ain't going to the ball. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Frankie. I had my heart set on going. Now I'm not. Oh, <laughs> oh Frankie, don't take on so. Come here. Hmm? Come here. Now, look, if I give you a little kiss, will that make you feel better? I don't know. <laughs> Let's try it and see what happens. <laughs> okay, come here. Mm -hmm. Does that make you feel any better? I can't tell you. Try to get... All right, all right. <laughs> break it up, will you? Move back a little I'm bit. I'm still unhappy. I said break it up. Alice, you don't have to kiss him. Oh, but Phil, he's unhappy, and I'm just trying to cheer him up. Send him a joke book. <laughs> now, look, Alice, you better go in the bedroom and get dressed. I'm going to get my full dress suit out of the trunk. All right. See you later, Frankie. Okay. <laughs> hey, Remley. Fine. Oh, man, where do you get a load of me in that full dress suit? I'm a dream, kid. Oh, you're going to see a ram rant. Oh, when I get that soft stuff on, kid, I'm going to be hard to handle. Look, as soon as I get it out of the trunk, I'll show it to you. Do hurry. I can hardly wait. Yeah, it's right here on the hanger. It's really a... Oh, no. Oh, it slipped off. It's lying on the bottom of the... Oh, look at it. It's all crumpled up. I'm never going to be able to wear this like this. What am I going to do? I guess you just won't be able to go to the ball, Cinderella. <laughs> oh, look, it's too late to have it pressed now. I... Hey, wait a minute. Hmm? Hey, Alice brought an iron with her. Hmm. I can use that to press my own suit. Mm -hmm. Hey, Frankie, help me, will you? Look, I'll heat the iron and you take the suit in the bathroom and dampen it. All right, give me the suit. <laughs> Thing with my talent, I gotta be a valet. Hurry up, yet, right, will you? Right. Well, come on with us. Oh, Phil! Phil, have you seen my curling iron? Alice, how would I know where it is? What would I be doing with your curling iron? Well, I need it right away. Will you please look for it? I ain't got the time. Use mine. <laughs> 
Hey, Remley, ain't you got that suit dampened yet? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Here it is. Well, let me have it so I can start pressing. Well, I better ring it out first. <laughs> what do you mean, ring it out? Ring it out. Like this. Oh, no. Oh, no, Remley. Oh, look at that suit. It's soaked. I told you just to dampen it. I did. How? I held it under the shower. Oh. <laughs> no, Remley, I can't go to the ball in this waterlogged suit. Now, how am I going to explain this to the president? I'll get a fishbowl and put it over your head. <laughs> what for? You can tell him you're a deep sea diver going formal. <laughs> now, wait a minute. I ain't got no time for no jokes. Now, hand me that iron, and I'll try to press it. Yeah. I better pull you up, Curly. Your airline sprung a leak. <laughs> oh, what if you stop with that? I'm never going to be able to press this suit. It's too soggy. There's no body to ah, it. Don't get excited, Curly. I'll admit this is a problem. But like always, I have a solution. Well, solution me. Simple. Starch it. <laughs> Starch it, huh? Starch it. Starch it. That's it. Yeah, that might do it. Yeah, the laundry always uses starch in my shirts. Hey, look, Frankie, I haven't got much time. Look, call room service and get some starch while I take a shower. Okay. Uh, how much starch do you think I ought to get? One box? No, no, that's a pretty big suit. You better get two boxes. <laughs> Suit's awful wet. I better get three boxes. Well, hurry up, will you? I'm going to take my shower. Oh, boy, I can't wait for that ball tonight. No doubt the Prez will ask me to sing. Probably goes for that high-class stuff. I think I'll sing the bell song from Latka. <laughs> no, no, no. I got a tune. I got a tune you'll be crazy about. A preacher went out walking. It was on one Sunday morning. It was against his religion, but he took that gun along. He shot himself some mighty fine quail and one little measly hare. But on his way, returning home, he met a great big grizzly bear. Now the bear got down in the middle of the road on all fours like a great big toad and looked that preacher right square in the eye. And the preacher looked at him and said, bye-bye. The preacher got up, took out the run. The bear right after that preacher did come. And he run, and he run for about a mile. Then the preacher sat down and rested a while. The preacher got up, started again. The bear right after him with more vim. And he ran, and he ran till he spotted a tree set up on the limb was the place for me. Bear reached up, made a grab for him. Preacher leaped and he made the limb. Pulled himself up and turned the bob, cast his eyes to the skies and he did shout, Oh, Lord, you delivered Daniel from the lion's den. Also delivered Jonah from the belly of the whale and then the Hebrew children from the fiery furnace of the good book do declare. Yes, Lord, if you can't help me for goodness sake, don't help that bear. <laughs> now just about then that limb let go and the preacher come tumbling down. Reached in his pocket, pulled his razor out just before he hit the ground. He hit the ground with an awful bang. It was a terrible sight. That preacher and the bear and a razor in his hair just a cut and left and right. Rolled around on the ground. The preacher was up and then he was down. The bear let out an awful moan. Looked like the preacher was holding his own. Said, if I get out of here alive with that good book, I will abide and I'll never sin on Sabbath day and Sunday. Come, I'll pray and pray to the heavens. He did glance, said, Lord, just give me one more chance. But his suspenders gave away and he knocked that bear ten feet away. Preacher got up, made a bound to the tree where he'd be safe and sound, pulled himself up and turned about, cast his eyes to the skies, and he did shout, oh, Lord, you delivered Daniel from the lion's den, also delivered Jonah from the belly of the whale, and then the blue chiller from the fiery furnace of the good book do declare, yes, Lord, if you can't help me, for goodness sakes, don't help that bad. Hey, that was a nice, refreshing shower. Feel wonderful now. I wonder if Remley got that starch. Hey, Remley. Huh? Hey, did you get the starch? I not only got it, I put it in the suit and pressed it for him. Ah, oh, you're wonderful, you baby boy. You, I'll be right out. I'm just trying. Hey, I feel great. A shower. Yeah. It's exhilarating. Only thing to do with yeah, water. Yeah, it feels wonderful. Yeah. Where's my suit, Remley? Suit's right here. Yeah. Lay it on the table. I want to see how, see what it looks like. Okay. There's your suit. <laughs> Frankie, what did you do to it? What's the matter? Is something wrong? Well, it looks like rigor mortis set in. <laughs> it's as hard as a rock. <laughs> yeah, but look at the way it holds a crease. <laughs> 
right, that ain't so hard. Then why did the pad shatter and the sleeves break off? <laughs> Lack of calcium. <laughs> Let's just stop making with them things. Now, you see, I can't wear this thing. Why not? You'll attract attention, get publicity. I'll get... <laughs> hey, you think so? Well, sure. I can see the headlines now. Bill Harris shows up at inaugural ball in a full dress suit, stiff as a board. <laughs> Ramley, hmm? I got news for you. Mark. You did this on purpose. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Now, what am I going to do? I can't go to the ball without a full dress suit. Well, why don't you rent one? Ain't one left in town. Willie rented the last one yesterday. There ain't no place where you could go now. And... Willie. Yeah, Willie. Yeah. Hey, hey, Remley, hmm? we could sneak into his room and lift it. Yeah. And if he don't have a suit, I could use his invitation. <laughs> Let's go, Penrod. <laughs> okay, Sam. Hey, Curly, are you sure this is Willie's room? Certainly. Can't you tell? He would have it locked. <laughs> Feel awful silly climbing through the transom Get up like there this. And quiet. Right. Shh. Now quiet now. Yeah. All right, all together. Let's jump down into the room. Let's go. Well, what these Republicans won't do to get a room in Washington. Hey, it's yeah. Fred Allen. Well, if it isn't Phil, don't put an olive in. It soaks up the good stuff, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, what is the idea of coming into my room through the transom? Well, I'm sorry, Fred. Look, I don't mind you being a little high, but this is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me, Phil, what are you doing in Washington? I was invited to the inaugural ball. Oh, the inaugural ball. <laughs> An ah left over from the oyster season last year. <laughs> Tell me, how, uh, how are things in California, Phil? Oh, they're great, Fred, great. They're everything. Hey, that reminds me, the old man sent his regards. The uh, old man? Yeah, Jackson. You know, Jack Benny. Oh, is he still alive? <laughs> That's right, of course he is. I remember reading about the new business he started during the snowstorm out in Beverly Hills. What business? Well, Benny was putting butter on snowballs and selling them for oranges out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, that's terrific, Fred. You've got a sensational sense of humor. You think so, really? <laughs> Hasn't he, Frankie? <laughs> I can take him or leave him. <laughs> Phil, who is this good humor man with the <laughs> good humor man with the pistachio expression? <laughs> well, Fred, don't you know who this is? No, but there are only two kinds of people who look like that, Phil. Those with sour stomachs and sponsors. <laughs> no, 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 Fred. This is uh, Frankie Remley. Oh, how are you, Frankie? I'm all right. What's the matter with you? <laughs> well, nothing's the matter with me. Why? Are those bags under your eyes or you're breaking in a saddle for Roy Rogers? <laughs> well, I, uh, I have a funny answer for that, but why should I give you an extra laugh on your show? <laughs> Hey, cut, cut now. Don't you guys get the... Well, he Look, started we... it. He, no, he, but he, I know. He but come over I the tram. We got know. business to do now. We got to get away from... so small, he'll go out through the keyhole, you know, if he starts. <laughs> no, but Fred, now look, he's a nice kid, and yes. we're looking for... Hey, Fred, maybe you can help me. Yeah. Have you got a full dress suit or maybe a, a tuxedo you can lend me? Oh, you're a little too late, Phil. I had a tuxedo, but Portland loaned it to her uncle last week. Oh, Fred, I need one badly. Can you get it back from him? Well, I guess I could, but... Gosh, I'd hate to dig him up just for that, Phil. <laughs> See you later, Phil. So long, Fred. <laughs> I'd hate to dig him up just for that. Pretty cute, is it? <laughs> that Alan's a great guy. Ain't he, Frankie? Yeah, if you say so. Come on, we gotta get Willie's invitation and dress suit. This time, pick the right room, will you? Well, look, Willie's room must be right on the other side of ours. I thought that it was... Well, on... Phil, so 
will you come in a minute? I want to ask you something. But look, Alice, I'm... In a... case they ask me to sing tonight, what do you think of this tune? A secret, a secret, I've got a little secret. A secret, a secret, a secret kind of secret. I'm aching for to shout it to every daffodil and tell the world about it. In fact, I think I will. If this isn't love, the whole world is crazy. If this isn't love, I'm daft as a daisy. With moons all around and cows jumping over. And I'll eat my hat if this isn't love. I'm feeling like the apple on top of William Tell. With this I cannot grapple because, because you're so adorable. If this isn't love, then winter is summer. If this isn't love, my heart needs a plumber. I'm swinging on stars, I'm riding on rainbows. I'm busted with bliss, and I'll kiss your hand if this isn't love. Finished now, Alice? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Come on, Curly, let's go get the suit and invitation before that certain party returns. <laughs> Oh, Frankie, it ain't no use. This suit of Willie's don't fit me. I don't know. You got it on, didn't you? Yeah, just barely. But it's too tight. Look at the way these pants cling to my legs. How's it look, Remley? Very alluring. <laughs> Looks like black underwear. <laughs> okay, I don't care what it looks like. I got my heart set on going to that ball, and I'm going. Hey, now that we found Willie's invitation, you're going too, huh? Yeah, I can... Wait a minute. I just happened to think I haven't got a full-dress suit either. Oh, kid, you're out of luck. Where could you possibly get one? I don't know, but I'm going to get one if I have to go through every transom in this hotel. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Come on. Well, come on, Curly. I'm in a hurry. Move faster. I can't. I keep telling you, I can't. <laughs> Dress suit of Willie's is choking me all over. <laughs> if I make one sudden move, I'm going to split it. Well, stop waddling. You look ridiculous. Hi, Mr. Remley. I... Hey, Mr. Remley, where you going with that penguin? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, smart guy. I ain't no penguin. I'm going to the president's ball, and this is my full dress suit. This is a full dress suit? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. How do I look, kid? <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother, are you bow-legged? <laughs> Curly ain't bow-legged. Just happens to have a well-turned ankle all the way up to the knee. <laughs> well, maybe I am a, a little bow-legged. A little? You look like you're standing on a pair of ice tongues. Oh. <laughs> you got a lot of nerve making fun of me. You look a little baggy yourself. What do you got on under that overcoat? My full dress suit. My Uncle Hyman got me an invitation to the ball. <laughs> you're wearing a full dress suit? <laughs> Curly, what do you think? <laughs> A little short. Mm. Maybe if you walk on your knees, you... <laughs> I mean, it's right. Worth a try. Maybe we can make it. Julia, stand still. Hey, you guys, quit making... Hold still. <laughs> Think we can get away with this, Curly? We can try it. Let's get started. Over my dead body. Uh-oh, I shouldn't have said that. Grab him, Frankie. Got him. Get 
Where's your All right, keep you quiet, Remy. Quiet now. Quiet. A little slow music, Remy, yeah. while I disrobe this character. Oh, pretty girl. Stop taking my coat off. Hold still, Julius. Like like back up a little bit. Give me back my uh, pants. Give me up. Oh, 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 help, help. help. Fellas, there's a big crowd here waiting to get into the ball. Yeah. Hey, Frankie. Huh? I feel silly wearing Willie's full dress suit. It's so tight I can't bend over. What are you kicking about? Julius is even smaller on me. You look pretty good, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Sure. I'm a dog. At least we got into the ball. We can keep our overcoats on till we get inside and nobody ain't gonna notice us in the crowd. Now, fellas, why are you both walking so funny? You've been acting so strange ever since we left the hotel. What do you mean, strange? Well, it's the first time I ever saw two guys ride in a taxi standing up. (laughs) I don't know what's the matter with you. Oh, Miss Faye, I'm on the reception committee. I'd like you to come over and meet the Secretary of the Interior. Oh, oh, it's a pleasure. My husband and I will be honored to meet him. Oh, by the way, this is my husband. How do you do, Mr. (laughs) Faye? Just, just follow me, please. Oh, gee, Phil, this is thrilling. Just think, we're meeting the Secretary of the Interior. Oh, gee. Gosh, I'm so flushed I... Oh, Phil, I dropped my gloves. I'll get him, honey. Hurry, go! Oh, no! Oh, no, my suit. This would happen just when I'm going to meet a cabinet member. Meet him anyway, Curly. I can't wait to see this. Oh, see what? The Secretary of the Interior meeting the Secretary of the Exterior. <laughs> my arm, Alice. Shall we go in? <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. But right now, here's your Rexall family druggist. The other day, one of my favorite customers came into the store, and she seemed in a bit of a hurry. Can you wait on me right away? Today's wash day, and I've got to get right back to the house. I wonder how you'd feel if you had a wash day that lasted a solid week. Oh, heaven forbid. Whatever made you think of that? Well, you just happened to remind me that one formula for Rexall's Pure Test Milk of Magnesia requires the product to be washed, often as long as a full week. Well, why do they go to all that trouble? So they can be sure it's pure enough to meet Rexall's standards. You know, every time you tell me something like that, I'm thankful all over again that you started me using Rexall products. Well, believe me, it makes us independent Rexall druggists feel good, too, when we stop to remember that every one of the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company get the same kind of patient, painstaking attention. And it makes us proud of the orange and blue Rexall sign in our windows that tells folks ours are the only stores where you can get those products. But the best part of all is the feeling of absolute confidence we have when we tell our customers you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. Hey, Curly. Too bad you didn't get into the ball. Wonderful affair. All right, all right. Don't rub it in. I planned on it for a long time, and I felt sure I was going to be at that president's inaugural ball. Oh, Phil. Phil, his telegram just came for you. Well, what does it say? Read it to me, honey. Well, just a minute now. It says, uh, it says, Dear Phil, don't feel too badly. I thought I was going to be there, too. Signed, Tom Dewey. <laughs> was produced and directed by Paul Phillips. The part of Frankie Remley was played by Elliot Lewis and Julius was played by Walter Tetley. Alice Faye appears to the courtesy of 20th Century Fox. This is Bill Foreman wishing good health to all from Rexall. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.